Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Yong Jin Kim from Korea. Very nice to meet you guys all. And also I'm very happy to have this opportunity to share my experience about GBR with you guys all. And thank you Ostem for giving me this opportunity. And to introduce myself, I'm an oral and maxillofacial surgeon specialist in Korea. And now I'm learning a dental clinic with uh, the specialists, including prosthodontist and endodontist. Now I'm usually I'm usually placing implant along with uh, additional surgery, including GBR or sinus surgery. So during my online lecture, I will be talking about how to maximize the success rate of GBR. And also, I want to share my technical tips for successful GBR. As you all know, the first goal of implant surgery is to get successful osteointegration. The definition of osteointegration is direct structural and functional connection between living bone and implant surface. So during implant placement, we should maintain the vitality of bone. By maintaining the vitality of bone, we can maximize the success rate of this osseointegration. But when making or when regenerating the bone around the bone defect area, we should understand basic and essential bone biology. So let's talk about bone biology very briefly. The bone consists of inorganic hydroxyapatite and organic compartment. And also bone has some cellular element, osteoblast and osteoclast. Osteoblast usually makes a bone and osteoclast usually reserve the bone. And also inside the bone, there is some organic matrix and inorganic matrix. The organic matrix is collagen, almost a type of collagen. And inorganic matrix is hydroxyapatite. So how can you make a bone successfully? To make the bone, we need these three important factors, the signals, bone cells, and matrix. Let's talk about these three important factors one by one in detail. So to make the bone, we need bone forming cell, osteoblast, inside our human body only osteoblast can make the bone. So osteoblast comes from mesenchymal stem cell. Also, to make a new bone, we should reserve the old bone. So we need osteoclast as well. And also we need scaffold. Scaffold provided by bone graft material, which may be autobone graft or genobone graft, genogenic bone graft or alloplastic material. And when selecting the bone, we should consider very important two properties. The first one is a structural properties, the porosity of bone graft material and pore side, the interconnection of each pore. We should consider these important factors. I will be talking about this structural property in later. And also we should consider biological property. According to the kind of graft material, the biological property can be different. Human bone, autogenous bone or allogenic bone can have some osteoinductive inductive induction. So, but most of graft material has osteoconduction. So about this osteoconduction and osteoinduction, I will be talking about this later. And also to stimulate the bone forming cells, osteoblast or osteoclast, we need some signaling molecules. Cytokines or growth factors are very important signaling molecules. So I will talk about these signaling molecules later as well. And let's talk these three important factors one by one. The first one is a signal. As I said before, cytokines, growth factors can be a signal for bone regeneration. So, as shown in this slide, you can see very important growth factors and cytokines involved in the regeneration of newborn and remodeling. But I want to emphasize these three 
cytokines and growth factors, BMP, bone morphogenetic protein, and TGF beta, transforming growth factor beta, and PDGF, brightly derived growth factor. Let's see this table. As I said before, PDGF, TGF beta, and BMP are very important signaling molecules for successful bone regeneration or bone repair. These PDGF and TGF beta are located inside the platelet. The main role of this PDGF and TGF beta is to increase osteoblast proliferation. In other words, with this, with this PDGF and TGF beta, we can increase the number of osteoblasts. So we can get test and predictable bone regeneration after GBI. And also BMP can induce bone formation directly. In other words, this BMP can stimulate or activate the inactive osteoblast. So activation is possible with this BMP. So the activated osteoblast can make a bone. So in this way, we can make bone successfully after GBI. So once again, PDGF and TGF beta are located inside the platelet. So we need blood. So bone graft material should be saturated by fresh blood to get this PDGF and TGF beta. So PDGF stimulate mitogenesis of mesenchymal stem cell. So we can increase the number of mesenchymal stem cell with this PDGF stimulation. And also TGF beta stimulate chemotaxis of osteoblast precursors. And also direct bone matrix formation will be possible by stimulating the osteoblast. So this PDGF and TGF beta is most important. So this PDGF and TGF beta are located inside the platelet. So let's see, this is a mesenchymal stem cell. After stimulating this mesenchymal stem cell with this PDGF and TGF beta, this mesenchymal stem cell can be differentiated to the osteoblast like this. So osteoblast comes from mesenchymal stem cell. So to differentiate this mesenchymal stem cell to osteoblast, we need several cytokines or growth factors, BMP, and PDGF, and TGF beta, and IGF. But I want to emphasize this PDGF and TGF beta. So this is a very simple healing pattern. Sorry. This is a very simple healing pattern after bone grafting or GBR. As you can see, after bone grafting, there should be a blood clot. So inside the blood clot, there must be platelet. Inside this platelet, there are PDGF and TGF beta. So after rupturing of this platelet, the PDGF and TGF beta will be released into the graft side. And so this PDGF and TGF beta will stimulate the mesenchymal stem cell. So this mesenchymal stem cell will be changed to the osteoblast and osteoblast will start to regenerate the bone inside graft material. In this way, we can get successful bone regeneration. This is a very, very simple sequence of bone regeneration after GBR or bone grafting. So, but please remember these two important growth factors, PDGF and TGF beta. So to increase the success rate of GBR or bone grafting, some dentists are mixing the graft material with this PRP. Or sometimes we can cover the GBR site with a PRF. PRP is a brightly rich plasma. PRF is a brightly rich pigment. Anyway, by concentrating this brightly we can increase the amount of PDGF and TGF beta because this 
these PDGF and teaser beta are located inside the flight lead. So this will be a quite good strategy to maximize the success rate of bone regeneration at the GBI. So if the JPEG size is quite big, while the defect shape is quite too difficult to get successful bone regeneration, and at that time, you can consider this PRP or PRF. So let's move on to the BMP. What's the BMP? BMP is a protein extractor from bone. This BMP could induce the local formation of new cartilage and bone when implanted at the known bony site. In 1965, Dr. Uris, he is also a pedic surgeon in UCLA. He, did, he first found this BMP. So he named this some protein extractors from the bone as a BMP. So he extracted some protein after demineralization of the bone. And then he injected these protein extractors from bone into the muscle. So he found that inside the muscle, the muscle is a known body site. Inside the muscle, he found the newborn formation, even though the muscle is not known body site. So we, he named these kinds of bone regeneration or bone formation as ectopic bone formation. So he found that some protein inside the bone can induce or can make bone inside known into in at the known bony site. So he named this protein extractors as a BMP. I think this BMP can play a very important role in regulation of bone growth or differentiation of various cells, including osteoblast and chondroblast and neural cell and epithelial cell. Anyway, we should focus on the function of this BMP about formation of skeletal tissue. BMP can induce the bone regeneration, bone formation directly by stimulating osteoblasts directly. So you guys can think like this. So the most ideal method for bone regeneration is to use BMP without any barrier membrane and any graft material. So yes, if we can use only BMP and we can contain the BMP inside the bone defect area exactly and ideally and firmly, we can make the bone. But the limitation of this BMP is the amount of BMP to get sufficient amount of BMP in the human bone in, with the human bone, sometimes 10 kg, sometimes 1.0 ton of human bone is required. According to the age of donor, the amount of BMP can be different. The young people has high level of BMP, but older people has very low level of BMP. So according to the age of the donor, according to the status of donor, the BMP can, the amount of BMP can be different. So this is quite ineffective, ineffective method. So we need another method to get BMP. So by using, by using another method, some companies have, some companies have developed the recombinant human BMP. So by using genetic technology, we can make BMP into the lab, laboratory. So the Impuse is a first developed recombinant human BMP. So this is a BMP. So, but how to deliver this BMP to the bone defect area? We need some carrier. So to use this impulse, a cellular collagen sponge was used to, 
to move this BMP to the bone defect area. So in other words, this acellular collagen spongy is a carrier of this BMP. So by using this recombinant human BMP, we can get predictable bone formation. So we can do GBR and we can do sinus surgery with this BMP. Like this, inside the sinus, we can place the collagen sponge soaked with this BMP. And then as time goes by, this BMP will stimulate the osteoblast and we can get successful bone regeneration inside sinus cavity or bone defect area around the implant. But I think that the carrier of BMP is most important factor. A cellular collagen sponge in Impuse, so Impuse is a first developed BMP, could be good carrier of BMP as well as scaffold of primary human progenitor cells. But this a cellular collagen sponge is lack of space keeping ability in GBR cases. So combination with space keeping device is required in the GBR case. Let's think about the purpose of GBR. We should make the bone. At the same time, we should increase the bone volume around the implant to make appropriate bone contour around the implant. So in other words, we should increase the volume. But this BMP is quite good. But the carrier of BMP has no space making ability. So to make the bone with a ideal contour, we should use some space keeping devices. Membrane should be considered. So let's see this case. This patient report to my clinic to remove this implant. Right lower side, two implants had, had very severe bone defect, bone loss. So I decided to remove these two implants and then I placed the implant. As shown on this panorama, you can see very severe vertical bone defect. So in this case, I placed the implant right after the implant removal and then I performed the vertical bone augmentation with BMP. I think because of very poor, unfavorable, inappropriate prosthesis design, there was a severe plaque accumulation underneath the bridge. So this plaque could cause some severe peri-implantitis. I think so. Anyway, let's see this case. After removing abutment and prosthesis, I open the plaque. I could check severe vertical bone defect around these two implants. The first one was okay. So by using picture driver, now I'm removing the implant. I removed these two implants. And then now I'm removing granulation teeth. To maximize the success rate of GBR or bone grafting, we should remove entire granulation teeth or inflammatory teeth completely.
and then now I am doing the building for implant placement after implant placement I perform the GBR with this DMP I didn't use bone graft material only BMP was used Drilling was done and 5.0 diameter TS3 implants were placed. Drilling, I skip. And now I'm placing implant. Two TS3 implants were placed. And then that control was done. As you can see, there was a very severe bone defect. So, to increase bone vertically, I used the titanium mesh as a space keeping device. This is a collagen sponge soaked with BMP. This collagen sponge is a carrier of BMP. You should not suction this liquid. And then, this is a customized titanium mesh which can be connected to the implant. The name is Smart Builder. I will be talking about this Smart Builder in the later. So this titanium mass was used as a space keeping device. And then suturing was done. And let's skip the suture part. And see the result. And this is a panorama after implant placement. Two implants were placed and two increased the bone vertically. I use the BMP and titanium mesh. This is a PA. So in the this OPG panorama and the PA, you cannot find any graft materials. But in underneath the titanium mesh and inside bone defect, there was a BMP. The collagen sponge soaked with BMP. So four months later, final prosthesis was delivered. Yeah. The bone was regenerated quite well. And this is a PA after final prosthesis delivery. Even though I didn't place the graft material, I could, I could get successful bone regeneration around the implant. Yeah. So as shown in this previous case, the signal molecule is quite important. Without graft material, we can get bone regeneration with a BMP. So let's move on to the bone cell. These are bone cells related to bone regeneration or bone remodeling. So the first one is osteoblast. Osteoblast are derived from mesenchymal stem cell, as you all know, and are responsible for bone matrix synthesis and its subsequent mineralization. So, briefly, this osteoblast can make bone. And in the adult skeleton, the majority of bone surface that are undergoing neither formation nor rejection are lined by bone lining cell. So, we can call this inactive osteoblast as a bone lining cell. This bone lining cell usually located underneath the periosteum. So after flap elevation, this 
bone lining cell underneath the periosteum can be activated to make the bone. This is osteoblast, the shape of osteoblast. Osteoblast can make a bone, can make osteoid, and can make the mineral. So this osteoblast can make a bone. Only osteoblast can make a bone inside our human body. And osteocytes are osteoblasts that became incorporated within the newly formed osteoid, which eventually become, becomes calcified bone. So once this osteoblast is entrapped, into the newly formed bone, which this osteoblast can be changed to the osteocyte. This osteocyte has some cell process called canaliculi. So these osteocytes are connected to each other. So they can make some signal change. So they can communicate to each other through this canaliculi. Yeah, this is the shape of osteocyte. This is the same image of osteocyte. You can see this canaliculi like this. With, through this canaliculi, this osteocyte can exchange some signal or some message. And then this is osteoclast. Osteoclasts usually reserve the bone. Osteoclasts are large multinucleated cells like macrophage. So the function is osteoclast is very similar as macrophage. And this is the shape of osteoclast. Ruffle the border to reserve the bone. And but there are some difference between osteoblast and clast. The source of bone cells are different. Mesenchyma stem cell is a source of osteoblast. The hematopoietic stem cells are source of osteoclast. So, mesenchymal stem cell can proliferate, proliferate, sorry, osteoblast comes from mesenchymal stem cell. Osteoclast comes from hematopoietic stem cell, briefly. So inside bone marrow, there are sufficient amount of mesenchymal stem cell. So bone marrow is quite important to get some to get sufficient amount of mesenchymal stem cell. And also inside the periosteum or endosteum, we can find some mesenchymal stem cell. And also inside the blood circulation, there are mesenchymal stem cell and also surrounding soft teeth there are some mesenchymal stem cell so with this mesenchymal stem cell we can activate this mesenchymal stem cell and then we can get osteoblast finally this osteoblast can regenerate bone after GBR so after bone grafting there will be a, there must be a, some bone remodeling process. So after implant placement, the bone healing sequence is the same. So during bone remodeling, which one comes first, osteoblast or osteoclast? Bone regeneration first or bone reduction first? Bone reduction first. This is the right answer. So during, sorry, after implant placement, even though you could get high initial stability, we should wait at least six weeks to take an impression, to give some occlusal loading to the implant. Why? Why should we wait? Even though you could get high initial stability. During bone remodeling, osteoclast comes first, so resection first. Even though you could get high initial stability after implant placement, this stability will go down to zero by after during resolving the bone. While osteoclast resolve the bone around the implant, the initial stability will decrease to zero. So by remodeling, by making the new bone, 
by may regenerating the bone with osteoblast, secondary stability will be increased. The same sequence, same healing process will occur after GBR. So osteoclast resolve the bone, pre-existing bone pulse, and then osteoblast make a new bone. This is a general bone healing or bone remodeling sequence. So as shown in this picture, osteoclast resolve the bone first, and then this bone resorption will be followed by bone regeneration by osteoblast. So osteoclast resorbed the bone first and osteoblast replace the resorbed bone. This is a general bone remodeling process. So we should understand the communication between osteoblast and the osteoclast. Osteoblast and osteoclast has some communication through this link, link OPG sequence. So link is a receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand, ligand. And link is a receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B. So once the osteoblast make the bone, this osteoblast will release link receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand. This osteoblast release this link. Some pre-osteoclast cell, osteoclast precursor cell with this link. Link is some receptor. This link can will bind to this link. So after bind, link binding to link, this osteoclast precursor cell can be activated to the active osteoclast. So this activated osteoclast will resolve the bone. So this is a common sequence. Bone formation by osteoblast, and then osteoblast release this link. And this link will bind to the link. This is a free fusion osteoclast. And then after binding, after link binding to this link, this purifusion osteoclast will be activated to the osteoclast, multinucleated osteoclast. And this osteoclast will resolve the bone. And also, this is, this is a general method. And also, once the osteoclast resolve the bone, how can this osteoclast bone resorption, resorption replace how can this osteoclast bone resorption replaced by osteoblast? So this is another communication method between from osteoclast to osteoblast. Once the osteoclast resorb the bone, the BMP will be released. BMP is a bone morphogenetic protein, as I said before. Can you guys all remember? The BMP is located inside the bone. As I said, this BMP is just some protein extractors from the bone. Anyway, inside the bone, this there must be BMP. Once the osteoclast resolve the bone, this BMP will be released outside the bone. So some mesenchyma stem cell, MSC means mesenchyma stem cell. The mesenchyma stem cell with this receptor to BMP can be changed to the osteoblast after this BMP binding to this mesenchymal stem cell. And this way, once the osteoclast reach up the bone, the other side, osteoblast, can make a bone. This is a general communication. And to summarize, osteoclast, once the osteoclast reach up the bone, the BMP can be a signaling molecule. BMP will be released outside the bone and mesenchymal stem cell, this BMP will bind to this mesenchymal stem cell and this mesenchymal stem cell will be changed to the osteoblast. And also osteoblast, once the osteoblast make the bone, this osteoblast will release rancor. And the pre 
cost of osteo class. Osteo class precursor cells can be activated to the osteo class. This is a general communication method between osteo class and osteo class. The final factor is matrix. Matrix is a bone graft material to hold the signaling molecule to hold bone forming cell or to hold osteo class. We need some scaffold. Scaffold is a matrix. Autogenous bone, allogenic bone, and genogenic bone, and alloplastic material. Any kind of graft material can play a role as a scap matrix. So about this bone graft material, we will be talking about in next session. So once again, to get successful bone regeneration after GBR or bone grafting, we require signaling molecules and bone cells and matrix. Please remember this animation about bone regeneration. For the first time, platelet rupture. Inside this platelet, the signaling molecules, PDGF and TGF beta will be released. And this PDGF and TGF beta will stimulate Mesenchyma stem cell, and this mesenchyma stem cell will be changed to the osteoblast, and osteoblast will start to make the bone. And this is very simple healing sequence of after bone graft. And also to hold this blood and to hold bone forming cell, we need matrix bone graft material. So please remember these three important factors. So let's talk about mechanism of bone regeneration. Yeah. This is a classification of bone formation, osteogenesis, and osteoinduction, and osteoconduction, as I said before. There are three different ways of bone regeneration according to the graft material. As I said before, when selecting the graft material, we should consider biological properties of graft material. According to the graft material, the mechanism of bone regeneration can be different. The first one is osteogenesis. We can expect this osteogenesis by using the autogenous bone, um, not entire autogenous bone. Bone marrow, if you can use fresh bone marrow, patient own fresh bone marrow at that time, you can consider this osteogenesis. So what's the osteogenesis? Osteogenesis is a direct bone formation by living osteoblast. Only if the graft material has some living osteoblast, at that time, at that time we can get direct bone formation inside graft material. The formation and development of bone directly from osteoblast. So we can, sorry. If you can use this fresh bone metal from the iliac bone or other side, at that time, Inside this fresh bone marrow, there are a sufficient amount of living osteoblast. But inside the cortical bone, the amount of osteoblast is quite limited. So we cannot expect osteogenesis. Only when using this fresh bone marrow, patient own bone marrow, we can expect this osteogenesis, direct bone regeneration inside the bone graft material. And also, when using this fresh bone marrow, patient own fresh bone marrow, we can use signal inside bone marrow. There are a sufficient amount of osteoblast and blood. And also, this graft material can play a role as a scaffold. So when, when using this patient own bone marrow, we can use these three factors all signal, bone cell, and matrix. So bone regeneration is quite good, predictable. And let's move on to the osteo induction. So when using some allogenic material, allogenic bone graft material, we can expect 
hotel integration. So what's the hotel hotel intake hotel <coughs> sorry? What's the hotel induction? Now hotel induction means some bone regeneration by stimulating the mesenchymal stem cell. As I said, osteoblast comes from mesenchymal stem cell. So by stimulating the mesenchymal stem cell, this mesenchymal stem cell can be changed to the osteoblast. So if some graft material has some BMP, this BMP can stimulate the mesenchymal stem cell. So this mesenchymal stem cell can be changed to the osteoblast. This osteoblast can make the bone successfully. So as I said, this BMP is located inside the human bone matrix. So when using some allogenic bone graft material, we can expect this osteoinduction. So when using this BMP, we can use only signal because this BMP is a, some kind of signal but no bone cell inside this BMP. And also inside this BMP, there is no graft material. So we, this BMP can play a role, cannot play a role as a scaffold. So only signal we can use. But this BMP has quite a strong signaling molecule to activate the mesenchymal stem cell. So as I said before, we can expect ectopic bone regeneration. The ectopic bone formation means the bone formation at the known bony site. Inside the muscle, Dr. Urist found that this kind of bone formation. So he named this kind of bone formation as ectopic bone formation. So, but most of bo allogenic bone graft material has no osteoinduction. Why? As I said, this BMP is located inside bone, protein. BMP is a protein, right? So to maximize the amount of BMP release, releasing, some manufacturers are doing demineralization. As I said, bone consists of inorganic part and organic part. BMP is located inside this organic part. So by removing this inorganic part, we can maximize the amount of BMP release. So like this, after harvesting the bone from the donor, demineralization can be done. And then only organic component can be remain. So we can expect more BMP release. So in this way, we can increase the osteoinductivity. So if you can use DFDBA, demineralized freeze-dried bone allograft, at that time you can expect some osteoinduction, new bone formation by stimulating the mesenchymal stem cell with BMP inside the graft material. This is osteoinduction. So last mechanism is osteoconduction. So osteoconduction is a new bone formation by creeping substitu sub substitution phenomenon. Bone graft material is canvas to promote vessel ingrowth and osteoblastic activity. Bone graft material has no Effect. Bone graft material has no effect to the bone regeneration. Just bone graft material can make and maintain the space in, so into the, this bone graft material. The blood vessel will be migrated and bone point cell will be migrated and settle down and bone regeneration will start inside the bone graft material. So when using this bone graft material with only osteoconductivity, we should consider structural properties, pore size and roughness of pore, the mechanical strength and pore interconnection. I will be talking about this later. 
structural properties. Anyway, most of graphite material has only osteoconductivity. So when using this osteoconductivity, sorry, when using some bone, when using bone graphite material with osteoconductivity, the most important strategy is to maximize contact area to the host bone. By maximizing the contact surface to the host bone, this bone graft material has sufficient amount of blood supply and bone points as supply. In this way, we can maximize the success rate of bone regeneration. With this graft material with only osteoconductivity. So the graft material with only osteoconductivity has no signaling molecule and no bone forming cell. So only matrix, scaffold effect, that's all. So xenogenic material and alloplastic material has only osteoconductivity. So just like this scaffold, so let's imagine the Let's imagine the how to make the building apartment. So we need scaffold. So after making scaffold, we need concrete to fill this space. Same as bone regeneration. The graft material, xenogenic graft material or alloplast graft material can play a role as a only scaffold. We need bone cell to make the bone. And also to activate the bone forming cell, we need blood, signaling molecules, and cytokines. Please remember this mechanism. So once again, bone cell, and also to stimulate this bone cell, to migrate these bone cells, we need blood, signaling molecule, and also to maintain these bone cells and signal molecule, we need matrix. The bone regeneration is the same as making building. 